You either love it or hate it, mullets are definitely history's most divisive hairstyle. All right. The 70s haircut is making a huge comeback and reinventing itself. Many consider it the worst haircut in the world, but it takes some serious courage to pull it off. You got it. <laughs> On the air here, everybody knows it now. Thus, making it the coolest haircut in the world. Mullets started on rock stars, moved to country stars, and are now in the mainstream on your favorite celebrities and influencers. Like a little black dress or red lips, the mullet will truly never go out of style. I'm not getting rid of the mullet, Kirsty. Move over Billy Ray Cyrus, Miley Cyrus is taking her father's mullet and making it cool. You were born to have a mullet. Interesting. Yes. Just like history, fashion trends are destined to repeat themselves. Right now, mullets have the spotlight. For the new decade, Rihanna brought back her mullet for Savage and Fenty Volume 2 lingerie show. It's giving us a throwback to 2013, when she was the only woman who could pull off a mullet. I was thinking of Pat Benatar and Joan Jett, all these strong women, says Yousef Williams, Rihanna's longtime hairstylist, who helped create the looks for the show. Williams was also behind the scenes when Rihanna first rocked the look back in 2013. He recalled, she had a short cut, and I added the longer pieces in the back to turn it into a mullet. Rihanna may be a powerful trendsetter, but we usually need more than one celebrity to start a new movement. That's why she isn't the only one rocking a mullet. On Instagram, famous starlets are showing off their modern mullets. From Kiki Palmer, Rowan Blanchard, Halsey, Barbie Ferreira, Maisie Williams, and Miley Cyrus. For Miley Cyrus, her mom Tish gave her a quarantine haircut while on FaceTime being instructed by hairstylist Sally Hirschberger. The end result was a bold cut that can give her father Billy Ray Cyrus's mullet a run for his money. It seems like the Cyrus family has a thing for this unique hairdo. However, unlike Billy Ray, who once rocked the quintessential 80s business in the front, party in the back cut, Miley's cut is a bit more polished. It's a modern mullet, Hirschberger calls it. Less achy breaky heart and more 70s shag. Miley's hair transformation happened after the Netflix sensation Tiger King and the prominent mullet of Joe Exotic. Some fans speculated that Miley was inspired by him, but she revealed in an interview with Wall Street Journal saying, this was not just a random Wednesday Tiger King haircut. This was to go with the new music, but now I'm rolling through Calabasas with a Joe Exotic mullet. And she delivered on that new music. Miley has been a staple in music for over a decade, and like a good pop star, she knows a thing or two about reinventing herself. This this time, an album inspired by the 80s glam rock scene and all things that made it rebellious, including the mullet. The album is titled Plastic Heart with singles like Midnight Sky and Prisoner. Miley Cyrus was influenced by the likes of Stevie Nicks, Joan Jett, and Debbie Harry, whom all rocked mullets in their days and made it effortlessly chic. Miley's album was a critical and commercial success. The glamorous style along with her brazen attitude inspired many to try the mullet themselves. While celebrities Celebrity influence is real, there's another reason for the renewed interest in the cut social media, specifically TikTok. The app really blew up during quarantine, along with do-it-yourself self-care. On the platform, there are over a billion videos under the hashtag mullet, where people show off their mullet transformations in before and after videos. They also encourage viewers telling them you won't regret it. Many of these clips are tutorials, showing the haircut can be easily done by anyone at home with a pair of scissors. Unlike before, mullets are now androgynous and can be catered to to each person's face. The different designs make them individualistic and high fashion. It's just really exciting and I'm so happy to be back. The Savage and Venti Volume 2 lingerie show awed everyone when Cara Delevingne strutted down with her blonde mullet, but it was not the only runway with chic models rocking the cut. As the legendary hairstylist behind some of the world's biggest fashion shows and photo shoots, Guido Palau has been instrumental in at least one previous revival of the style. British model Edie Campbell's Raven mullet was cut by Palau as she posed for a fashion spread in Vogue. Designer Marc Jacobs loved it so much, he asked Palau to create similar dark colored mullet wigs for all 60 models in his fall and winter 2013 show. For so long, it was such a naff hairstyle, something bad from the 80s. But then some young person like Edie does it and makes it look fresh and cool again, says Palau. The same thing happened again back 
backstage at the Valentino's Spring 2021 show. Many of the young models who were selected through sheet casting, a lot of them had mullets, which I tweaked a bit, he says, adding, it's almost as if playing with the wrong proportions is what's so interesting to young people. Perhaps due to many who had cut their hair themselves, they leave the back and just cut the sides and the top, and wore the style in different ways, from feathery and choppy to blunt and heavy. For Valentino's Spring 2021, it was Pier Paolo Piccoli's first fashion show in Milan. The venue change signified a change in Valentino, brought about by Pier Paolo himself to support the Italian fashion industry. He called it radical romanticism. But what does that mean? For me, it rhymes with individuality, with the freedom to express our very own identity and diversity, he answered. Being romantic also means having a rebellious edge, not following the rules, embracing idealism, and fighting for a better world. The street casting was a perfect example and a celebration of the diversity of everyday Italians Piccoli wanted to include in his narration. Each look was individual, thoroughly chosen to showcase a unique personality through presentation. These young men and women came from different backgrounds and walks of life to come together to showcase a cohesive fashion collection. Apart from Valentino, Saint Laurent's Anthony Vaccarello tapped Finn Wolfhard for their Fall Winter 2019 campaign, showcasing his mullet in black and white. Gucci's 2019 ad campaign gave mullets to models to support their spunky edge. Models have always sported the mullet, but it's never transcended into the mainstream like it is currently, as it's always been deemed too risky because the mullet signified wearers as outliers. At least it ain't a mullet. The mullet, business up front and party in the back. Give us a spin around, mate. Show us that glorious mullet. Beautiful. It's a hairstyle that has shapeshifted in and out of fashion since, well, forever. The name itself wasn't coined until recent times, with the Oxford English Dictionary crediting the Beastie Boys 1994 classic Mullet Head for common popularization. But as we know, the infamous cut often referred to as the Kentucky Waterfall existed way before that. It's hypothesized that prehistoric people may have kept a mullet-like hairstyle for practical reasons. In his book Mullet Mad writer Alan Henderson says they discovered the practical benefit of cutting their fringe to keep it out of their eyes while extra growth at the back would keep their necks warm and protected from the rain. There are also Greek statues that date back to the 6th century BCE sporting mullets. Ancient Roman chariot racers rocked them too. And in the 16th century, Hittite warriors sported them, along with the Assyrians and the Egyptians. In the US, the style dates back to Native American tribes that often combined the look with a mohawk. Then there's President Benjamin Franklin, who in the late 18th century wore a skullet, a style that's bald on top and long in the back. He apparently thought that with this down-to-earth, slightly rough look, he could charm France into increasing its financial and diplomatic support of America. Mullet-like styles have been around throughout much of human history, but it wasn't tied to subcultures or stereotypes until much later. I wouldn't like to put a name to it. Still without a name, the hairstyle became prominent in pop culture during the 1970s. Perhaps the most iconic mullet that ever was has to be David Bowie's iconic red haircut. It was the advent of glam rock, with David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust leading the way. The hard to pull off color with even tougher to pull off style made David Bowie admirable. At the time, Bowie was known for his androgynous style throughout his career, and it was all captured in that one hairdo, a fusion of traditionally female and male styles, long and short in one. So Susie Ronson, the hairdresser who created Bowie's Crimson Ziggy Stardust cut, explained how it came about in 1972. She wrote in The Moth, All These Wonders, Bowie walked over to show me a photo in a magazine. It was of a model for fashion designer Kanzai Yamamoto with short, red, spiky hair. He said, can you do that? And as I said yes, I was thinking, that's a little weird, it's a woman's hairstyle, and how am I actually gonna do it? The gender-neutral roots of Bowie's cut come full circle to the modern mullet of today with LGBTQ plus icons from Joan Jett to Tegan and Sarah and Christine from Christine and the Queens all sporting them. Willa Paskin, host of the History of the Mullet podcast, says, The sentiment that the mullet is particularly classless, outmoded, and hideous is still the dominant one, which is exactly what the subcultures who have embraced the mullet, electro-punk kids, self-aware rustic lovers, fashionistas, and queer people, that's what they like about it, the way it thumbs its nose at mainstream respectability. 
Also in the 70s, we had Rod Stewart's Mane and Wings-era Paul McCartney, only two out of a parade of male rockers. That was only a taste of what was to come. You sure that's what you want? Mm. Good old yellow pages. Then came the 1980s. The mullet transcended culture. Whether you were metal or country, yuppie or punk, jock or biker, the mullet was everywhere. Why? because it was cool. The in-your-face statement style from the 70s became normal. People had posters of Patrick Swayze and Dirty Dancing, no doubt contemplating a mullet of their own. They drooled over Kiefer Sutherland and the Lost Boys marveling at his short spikes on top and horse-like tail at the back. It symbolized rebellion, which every teen at the time wanted to relate to. Plus, having a mullet then was fun. Though the style was seen predominantly on white dudes, with notable exceptions, a slew of female figures did rock the mullet, Cher, Jane Fonda, and Joan Jett among them. These were powerful women who didn't care what others thought of them, a message that resonates with the generation today. One of the reasons that the new generation is embracing the mullet as the haircut is its symbolism of freedom. It's a statement relating to the message of being free to be who you are and being free from others' opinions. At the end of the 80s, the mullet was also fully embraced by LGBTQ plus culture. In the documentary American Mullet, one woman and sees it as a signifier of her sexuality, saying, I absolutely think it's a lesbian haircut, because it's always my hair that gives me away. Another says that she loves the mullet because it's kind of a genderless haircut. We need to talk about what it means to be male and female. Hi, I'm Michael Bolton. <laughs> In the 90s, the trend began its steady decline. The mullet, it just is such a good thing, isn't it? With some exceptions for sure, not only was the style fading, it was becoming one of the most infamous, most divisive hairstyles of all time. I think 1990 said one thing about my hair. Uh, it was time to get it cut. It's hard to pinpoint what caused this shift in opinion, but the emerging stereotype had taken shape. It depicted low-income individuals who couldn't let go of bygone possibilities of the 80s and the popular haircut. Pop culture threw away the hairdo, as it was no longer paraded by pop stars and TV hosts. Along with that, the public threw it away too. Once again, a number one. The mullet quickly became taboo, a source of embarrassment for people who once proudly flicked their mullets into the wind. U2's Bono regretted having a mullet. Mel Gibson chopped his off, as did Rob Lowe and almost everyone except Billy Ray Cyrus. Mullets were no longer a thing, and anyone holding on became outdated. By the late 90s and early 2000s, only a select few wore the cut. The artistic types, subculture embracing individuals who didn't mind the negative association, they used it as a symbol of being an outsider and being a proud outsider. In the last 10 years of Western culture, mullets have broadly remained tethered to 80s nostalgia. TV characters like Steve from Stranger Things have gleefully tipped their hats to the trend. In throwbacks like these, there's a clear look at how crazy the 80s hairstyle was. And with mullet competitions also being a thing, there's a sense that it's still one big joke. Like the name itself is synonymous with all things hilariously awful. The mullet, it is not common today. Surely all of this adds up to the impossibility of a comeback, right? Wrong. Is that technically a mullet, the, your hairstyle? Uh, yes. As time passes, there is a phenomenon where we view the past more positively. Slowly but surely, the negative associations of the mullet started to wear off, and we remember how it represented how it was okay to be different. The signs of the comeback came from pop culture. In 2013, Rihanna sported a full-on mullet at the opening of New York Fashion Week, while Zendaya appeared on the red carpet at the 2016 Grammys with a more subtle take on the style. Then, in September of 2017, Virgil Abloh Pablo sent models down the off-white catwalk in high fashion variations of the hairdo, while last year Vogue hailed the mullet as street style's unlikely new star, as worn by dazed beauty favorite Princess Gollum. As hairstylist Rihanna Capri explains, the new mullet is more low-key, less drastic and in-your-face than the 80s mullet. She says, what I've done recently is a more modified and more fashion-forward version of the mullet called the chillet, or a chill mullet. The hair in the back is not long than the hair in the front, but it has the illusion or silhouette of a mullet. Just like that, the mullet reinvented itself for the 21st century. This 80s staple is back, and this time, it's for everyone. As long as you have the guts for it, as it's a hard decision to make.
And that's what it's about, owning it and enjoying it. In 2019, starlets from Billie Eilish, albeit by accident, to Finn Wolfhard rocked the style so many thought it was only a matter of time before it hit the mainstream for Gen Z clientele. Even Miley Cyrus is taking cues from her dad, Billy Ray, who once sported one of the most iconic mullets of all time. Euphoria actress Barbie Ferreira rocking what stylists are labeling as the modern mullet. The star took to Instagram to show off her new style. Famously, the mullet is when the hair is cut short at the front and sides with the back left long, although the newer take on this can be styled in different ways. Whether it's embracing a softer look and working with the hair's natural movement, or incorporating a more severe crop for a disconnected and texture-happy haircut, the modern mullet is a versatile template to work from. Miley's take is bright blonde with dark roots and has the back coming down just below the ears with rough, uneven bangs. That's just kind of a natural shape that our hair grows in. Even if the mullet falls out of style for the general public, there will always be someone holding it in high esteem. What kind of haircut do you have, bro? A mullet. Those who are not afraid to show they are different, out of the mainstream, and able to embrace trends past their expiration date, the mullet will never fade away, only reinvent itself. I don't think anybody on the red carpet tonight is going to have a mullet, so that is probably I decided true. I'd do it. So do you think the mullet is cool or tacky? Would you ever try it or do you have one now? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. For more videos on fashion and beauty, be sure to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more.